Hi guys, and welcome back to Chemistry 1032 Lab Example Problem Videos. I am your host, Dr. Russell Betts, and I'll be guiding you through today's example. Today we're looking at example 10.2, Classes of Organic Compounds. Name the class of compounds for each of the following organic molecules. Okay, pretty standard question and things that you really need to do. Um, classes of compounds are across most biological sciences. Uh, chemistry, biochemistry, biology, genetics, uh, proteomics, all this kind of stuff. All, almost every medical field uh, will involve you at least having a basic understanding of the names of some of the more important classes of compounds, such as alcohols and amines and carboxylic acids, because they're just, they're just very, very, very common uh, in biological systems. So let's take a look at the first one. Let's look at A. We want to name that class of compounds. So students often will look at a molecule and kind of panic a little bit because we're asking you about the class of compound. Now, let me get a little darker color. Now, when you look at a molecule and you're trying to figure out what class of compound it is, the first thing I like to do is look at the non-carbon and hydrogen elements or atoms. So here I have a oxygen and an oxygen. So okay, my class of compound has to be one of the one of the few that have two oxygens. Okay. Now let me circle something very important right there. Now that is a carbonyl. Carbon double bonded to oxygen. That is very common. It's very common and it's also a very good landmark. Carbonyl. There's only so many uh, classes of compounds that you're going to have to know that have a carbonyl in them. All right. Now the next thing I want you to notice is that right there. That is hydroxyl. Now those are not, these are, uh, hydroxyl and carbonyl are not classes. They're actually functional groups, or if you would like, structural elements that make up classes, okay? So now, we have a class of compounds that has a carbonyl, also has a hydroxyl. That screams to me carboxylic acid, because a carboxylic acid always, always, always has a carbonyl. Here, let me draw that in red. Let me keep my colors consistent here. Let me just draw that in red. There we go. Carb, ah, pardon me. Carbonyl, there we go. And a hydroxyl. Always. That's always a carboxylic acid. It doesn't really matter what's out here. You can just use R, where R is essentially any group you can think of for the most part. Carboxylic acid, carbonyl, and a hydroxyl. Now the hydroxyl is bonded directly to the carbonyl carbon, directly. Now, that's how you kind of want to look at these things. Look for what I call landmarks, carbonyl hydroxyl. So you have to look for a class of compounds that has both a carbonyl and a hydroxyl. And there's only one you have to know and that's carboxylic acid, okay? So this is a carboxylic acid. Okay, carboxylic acid. All right, so that was how you do the first one. So again, look for the non-carbon and hydrogen elements, find out how many you have, and try to figure out, by looking in your notes, looking in the, the lab manual, try to figure out which one's which, okay? Now, let me uh, erase this work and let's move on to the next one. Now while I'm erasing it I hope you're looking at the next one and saying hmm what structural elements do I see that are important. Now I'm going to redraw the molecule down here and this is an expanded structural formula. There we go. Now we have a structural element or a functional group that we also had in the previous example. We have in OH right there. See they both have OH. In this example it's condensed 
in this example, it's expanded, but it's still OH. Now, let me just circle it down here as well. There's only a few examples that you have to know of the classes of compounds that actually have hydroxyl. One is the carboxylic acid, and the other one, if you look in your lab manual, you will see alcohol also has a hydroxyl, but alcohols do not have carbonyl, okay? But they do not contain carbonyl. So whenever you have an hydroxyl and no carbonyl, but a bunch of carbons and hydrogens, all day long, that's going to be alcohol, okay? So this one is an alcohol. All right, now let's move on to the next one, the last one. While I'm erasing the work from the previous one, you guys should be looking at letter C's example and trying to determine or, or circle for yourself the non-carbon and hydrogen uh, elements or atoms. So there's an oxygen and a nitrogen. Okay. So now we have a class of compounds that contains nitrogen. And again, in your lab manual, there's only a few examples that actually contain nitrogen. So you can just go and take a look. Now, when you do that, you're going to see there's two kinds of classes that you have to know that contain nitrogen. So the nitrogen containing classes that you have to know are amine and amide. Okay, amine, amide. They both have nitrogen, but contains nitrogen. Contains nitrogen too. The amide and the amine both contain nitrogen. And amides have something else, carbonyl. So there's that carbonyl again. So amines contain nitrogen. Amides contain nitrogen and carbonyl. So let's take a look at our example here. We have, let me just redraw what the problem is. It's a habit I got into when I was a young student, and I still, to this day, just basically redraw the problem. I think it just helps me think. Maybe it'll help you think as well. Well, let's draw or circle carbonyl, look at that, and a nitrogen. Well, it has the carbonyl and it has the nitrogen. The nitrogen is bonded directly to the carbonyl, so this must be amide. Okay, now that's only three examples. You know, your book, your lab manual contains many more examples, so you're going to have to uh, know them and you're going to have to look at your book and figure them out. Uh, and if you're reading in your book and you're looking at the amide section, you're going to notice there's different types of amides. Now, that's something we can go into here for just a moment. If you look at the amide, look at what's attached to the nitrogen. If there's hydrogens attached to the nitrogen, say two hydrogens, those are called primary amides. If there's one hydrogen attached to the nitrogen and, say, another carbon, that's called a secondary amide. And if there's two carbon groups, this one and that one, attached to the amide, that's called a tertiary amide. So even inside of the class, there can be subclasses, like such as primary, secondary, and tertiary amides. So make sure you take a look in your book and try to, uh, uh, for yourself, distinguish the differences between primary, secondary, and tertiary. Um, that's an important point, but the more important point, at least in my opinion, is that you can identify an amide or identify an amine by looking at it. So now, I hope I've given you uh, at least a mechanism by which you can approach these types of problems, the things you should look for to help you solve the problems, and the things that you should look out for in order not to fall into any, any traps out there that may confuse you. Now, remember, this could very easily be on your exam. So you're going to want to memorize these classes and memorize them so that you can identify them by looking at them. All right? Now with that, I would like to wish you good luck and good chemistry.